Hey guys, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan. Now we're looking at a C33 Nissan Laurel. This one here bought from the auction for a USA import. And this one has only 18,000 original kilometers on it. Really crazy. So the condition inside out is really, really good. Nissan Laurel is a fantastic car, inline six cylinder rear wheel drive. You can get them with a turbo RB20 engine, basically a turbo Skyline engine. Uh, this one here is a single cam non-turbo, but with 18,000 original kilometers, that's less than 600 miles per year. Crazy. Now usually I'll have the hood open right now, but uh, I have it closed because the hood dampers don't work. One of the few problems on the car. So I'll open this up, have a look at the hood ornament. Laurel used to have the Lexus <laughs> badge apparently. So that's kind of cool. And look at this, Laurel since 1968. And they want you to know this for sure because it also says that here, Laurel since 1968, since my mom was eight years old. Okay, so we're gonna look at the engine right now. The engine room is fun to look at because it's super clean and because the RB20 DE engine is not that common. But I have to say with 18,000 kilometers on it and an engine that is probably extremely reliable with less heat than the turbocharged version, which is also known to be a fairly reliable engine, I think it's gonna last forever and ever. Okay. And so not much to see here. The oil is good, the coolant is good, and the engine looks to be fine. It is interesting seeing a distributor because you don't see those anymore. And so for all you young people or people who have uh, not old cars, the distributor decides where to put the spark and the cylinders. And so it has a gear set to the top here, the camshaft pulley. And then that spins a little thing inside that touches contacts. And when it touches a contact, it sends the spark to the spark plugs. And so usually the computer does that in most modern cars, but uh, I guess until kind of like 92 or so, all the cars had that. And I think fuel injection with coil packs started in maybe mid to early 80s, depending on the car. Okay, gonna close that. I do feel weird explaining those things because to most people who watch the channel, of course they know it, but to a lot of people, they just don't know about that kind of thing. Just like a points ignition to, for my generation is something that's kind of unknown. Okay, I put the fog lights on because fog lights that are yellow are awesome and then they're enclosed in the same housing as the headlights, which for a lot of JDM cars that were sold abroad, they would come with different headlights because regulations don't allow for some countries to have a fog light with the headlight in the same lens. And so, like for example, you see that in the Honda, um, Honda Integra will have uh, different headlights, JDM version and, and USDM version. Okay, so let's take a look at the auction sheet here. It's a 1992 Laurel Metalist is the uh, uh, grade level. 18,644 original kilometers, no little X here, and so that's authentic mileage. And when you look at the inside, you'll uh, be sure of that. It has been in an accident, so our grade, it was a rear accident, including rear panel, underside, and left rear side member um, accident damage that has been repaired. Interior is B. I would grade it an A after a cleanup. It needs a little bit of things, but not really that bad, uh, especially for the mileage. It's like, yes. Okay, authentic kilometers in the 18,000s, leather seats and power seats, and seat wear, wrinkles and dirty, door, mirror, uh, door molding clear coat scratched. No, door molding clear coat scratched. I think they're talking about this thing here. Okay, and rear panel, oh, I already said that. Okay, looking at the body here, very good body with some things that need to be cleaned. Uh, A3 and paint marks on the front bumper, A3 and U1 on the rear bumper. These are pretty major. And then we have a medium dent on the backside. I'm gonna show you that medium dent, and then I'm gonna do once around, and you'll be able to see the scratches on the uh, bumper. Here's the dent right there. And I know that it's a little bit dark, so a bit hard to see that. So my apologies. Okay. And you'll be able to see down here on the front bumper. The scuffs on the corners, because Grandpa drove this until he retired from driving. And that's why he didn't drive it that much. 
Okay, so let's do a once around here. I think the Laurel is awesome looking by today's standards. I love the super long hood and the super long back. I love the low stance. These days you don't get the shape like jupe, 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 jupe. You don't get that shape anymore. You get this. It's just the low hood line with the low belt line and the big windows is something that today's crash standards don't allow for anymore. So the Laurel in that respect is great looking. And to a lot of people, they're not going to realize how cool the car is. So it's sort of something of a sleeper. But it feels special enough. And for those who know this car, they'll be like, Dang, he got the low roll. Wheels on it are the same as the Skyline non-turbo wheels. Four lugs. And this car has one of the coolest things, and part of the reason why I love the Laurel so much, is it has no B-pillars. Take a look at those windows. When you roll them down, you get from here until here all open. I mean, the back window doesn't go all the way down, so it comes up a little bit, but it's very cool to have a B-pillarless door. Not a lot of cars have that, and that would have been a big deal when this came out, because people, I think, would be surprised with it. Okay, so the hood has some paint damage here. I don't know exactly what it is, but it doesn't look like it comes off. I don't think that there's anything else that I haven't mentioned, though. Rear bumper has the uh, A3. Let's find that. Ah, there's a K car! That one has black plates. Take a look. Black plates with the yellow writing means it's a uh, only used for corporate purposes. Right there. Okay, tires are a 2005, but they have what looks like 100% of their tread on them. Very cool. Okay, let's go to the interior. I shall do the back first. Look at that. You can see the no B pillar here. Isn't that crazy? And if you cut this off, I mean, first off, you're an idiot, but if you did cut this off, then shoosh, you'd have all that space in there with nothing getting in the way. This is a little bit tangled, but it is what it is. Anyways, to the rear seats, we have the grandpa seat covers, my favorite, they are original. And inside here has the original plastic covering this centerpiece. Fold this down. You can put your hand on that and feel the lace and feel like an elderly person. But you're gonna look really JDM and cool. Like a JDM grandpa. Laurel since 1968. Okay, so good condition. Rear seats, carpets are nice and clean. They look like nobody sat in these. Um, headline are good. Big C pillars. I guess you would need those for crash safety, which they were just starting to understand back then. Door card here is good. We got some dirtiness in here. And then power seats. That's cool. Wee! It works. Now, seat here. They're pretty high bolstered seats for this type of car, which is cool. What I mean is this section here comes out a lot, so it holds you in nicely. And then this needs to be cleaned, but you can clean that right up. And, yeah. Okay, now steering wheel is cool because this is a 1992 car with steering wheel buttons on it for radio controls. That's cool. This is Laurel on the steering wheel, so if you lend the car to somebody and they forget that it's cool, they can see it right there. Okay, climate control AC, another 1992 kind of special type of thing. 18,665 kilometers there. AC works nice and strong. It's an R12, and so it's bad for the environment, but good for you when you're hot. Here's the climate control. We have an analog clock, which is really cool. And look at this. This is the original plastic on the dashboard. Down here, too. Trunk pop here. Folding mirrors. Necessary in Japan. Outside of Japan, just cool to have. Power steering works well. Shifting is good. 
It has been smoked in, but doesn't smell bad in the car. Tape deck. And look at this. This is so grandpa. It's like, I need to have a thermometer in my car. Techno Thermo car accessory for nice driving. So if you're if you're not gonna drive nicely, you can't have them in your car, I guess. Loro since 1968. I can just imagine the commercials in Japan. They probably said that. They were all into speaking English for car commercials back in the 80s. I mean, this is a 90s car, but you know what I mean. Here's how you take the uh, e-brake off. Instead of a, like it's a pedal style, so you give it a kick and then give it a pull. And it's so fun to pull it up. If this was my car, and if I had like the e-brake is off and I'm sitting at a traffic light, I would just be playing with this all day. Antenna up and down, power and snow. Place for goodies. Trunk in this is pretty big. You know, looking at the, the, the shape of the car, it doesn't look like it would be that big, but it is. Floor mats in there, some other goodies. And then the spare tires on the side. Very cool. Okay, so that's basically everything for uh, this uh, Nissan Laurel. And so we're gonna end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this one. I love these Laurels so very much. So I hope you do too. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a nice day.